To answer your first question, no. Madam Web is not a movie that like, yeah, it's not very good, but you go and you laugh at it and you have a great time. It is quite boring. I wanted to make this video before I make my Fantastic Four fan casting reaction video, a video that has been, you know, building and building for months and months and months. And we just finally got news today about a wonderful cast. And I'll talk about all of that in another video. But I want to make this video. I wanted this one to come out first. Just so anybody that's thinking about it, anybody that's like, should I spend money, and go to a movie theater to see Madam Web? You know, maybe I'll have a drink or something and then won't it be a great time? It will not. This movie is very, very, very boring. I would say it's like my main criticism of it. It has some things that are happening. Like there's there's a plot and there are certain action scenes that I didn't fully hate. I'm going to try as hard as I can not to spoil this movie for you. But here's another thing that's kind of important about whether you'll enjoy this movie or not. You've seen the trailer. I think they made two, maybe three. It's that. It's what's in those. Sony has never been good at making trailers that don't spoil the entire movie. Even Across the Spider-Verse, a good movie, you basically see the end of that movie in that trailer, right? That scene on the train, that's the end of the movie. Now, obviously, they have to sell it. I understand that. But I guess Disney Spider-Man and Sony Spider-Man seem to have different ethoses when creating the trailers. Disney Spider-Man... For all of its problems, it's not perfect. It knows when to keep a thing out of the trailer. Like, we never saw Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield in the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. In fact, they edited them out of shots. That was how much they knew not to put the whole movie in the trailer. And yes, that's a very specific kind of thing where you're not trying to spoil that reveal. But like Spider-Man Homecoming didn't spoil the vulture twist. They're just good at this. But Sony, it's the opposite. It's like there's someone who is in the background saying, make sure you put this last shot from the movie in the trailer. It's what they did with Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's what they did with Venom. Can't even remember how Venom 2 ends. Morbius doesn't have the exact last shot of the movie in her trailer, but it has a couple shots from the last scene of the movie. Then this one, to be fair, does not end with the final shot of the movie. But the movie is the trailer. Like, Sony, you gotta get it together. We gotta fix this. Because I don't think this movie is all that great. So it's not like it's, oh, we gotta protect our wonderful Madam Web so everybody can enjoy it. But, like, there's just not, like, a lot of value in showing the end of this movie because it's not that cool. I just don't understand. I, I, I really don't. I think Madam Web is messy. Here's another thing. When I came home from this movie, I told my girlfriend, I said, this movie, man, it's not good. And she asked, why Why are they not good? What is it with Sony? Why, why do they keep doing this and Morbius and all that stuff? And like, I honestly don't have an answer. Here's a question you may ask. Is this movie worse than Morbius? I think so. They're about the same. A, Matt Smith dancing is the most interesting thing in both of those movies. There's a dancing scene in this movie, but it's bizarre and not in the fun way. And then B, I think some of the action in Morbius almost kind of works, although I also think there's some action in this that almost kind of works, so I really, it's hard to compare them. Also, this movie does not have a post credit scene, so no Michael Keaton showing up as the Vulture, none of that. At this point, I would have loved it. It would have been wonderful if him and Morbius both showed up and were like, Spider-Man's probably have something to do with this. Uh, again, we're not spoiling things, especially things that have not explicitly been shown in the trailer. I will say, it's clear when this movie takes place, but it is unclear to me why, because I don't understand what doing it that way changes, especially since this movie is in its own universe. This is not in the Morbiverse, the Venomverse, the Andrew Garfieldverse, the Tom Hollandverse, or the Tobey Maguireverse. And it's not in the Across the spider verse verse thank God. I mean, I guess technically everything is, we are in the Across the spider verse verse but that, that movie isn't explicitly in the Across the spider verse verse I took some notes because I was pretty much alone in this theater, so I was in the back taking notes. First off, if this is something that will make you not want to see it in theaters, the line where she says, uh, he was with my mom in the Amazon when she was researching spiders right before she died. That is not in the movie. I know exactly where it was going to go. It's very clear, but they took it out probably out of embarrassment or something. And, um, and I mean, it did feel like a line that could have been three lines stitched together just to explain. Because in the trailer, if you don't explain the entire movie, no one will like it, I guess, is what they think happens. The dialogue is all over the place. I don't think anybody's performing particularly well in it. I don't think Dakota Johnson is a bad actor or anything like that. Like, I have not seen Cha-Cha real smooth, but like, I liked her in Bad Times at El Royale. I just don't think this is a good performance like from anybody i think maybe a different actor could have helped but honestly i don't think that's the problem i think the energy of the girls was weird the fact that it was three spider women doesn't really help it they could easily could have just been one julia carpenter and cassandra webb and then those two have to 
you know, protect each other. She has to protect little Julia because Julia is going to get killed by Ezekiel Sims, which I don't even want to get into because it doesn't make any sense. I understand why they did that instead of like Moreland. Man, the villain, it doesn't just not make any sense. It's also just like kind of boring. He's completely motivated by the fact that he has seen a vision that the children will kill him in the future. And this is all in the trailer, so I don't feel bad about this at all. Uh, speaking of that, uh, they do that scene in their costume. You see them on screen for five seconds each. There's maybe a combined 10 seconds of footage per actor in costume in this whole movie. So if you were like, well, at least we'll get to see. No, you won't. It's not in there. So this guy knows these women are going to kill him. He doesn't seem to know why. They don't want to kill him. They don't have spider powers. They will, apparently, but they don't yet. And the characters are Julia Carpenter, the second Spider Woman, Maddie Franklin, a character I'm very, very unfamiliar with, and then Anya Corazon, I think maybe the fourth Spider Woman. So those three characters are all apparently going to kill this guy. And he's like trying to find them to kill him first. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the movie. And to be fair to the Ezekiel Sims plotline, this movie is just not very coherent in terms of like what's going on. I don't like to like call out plot holes. And I'm not going to get really specific, but like the characters steal a car, a very, very specific car, and just drive around in it for the entire movie. They park it in places. It looks like it was stolen. Nobody cares. And it's like, well, that's not that big of a deal, except for the villain is using all of the surveillance that could possibly exist, and he is still not figuring this out, which is very weird. I just, man, I like these two movies don't need to exist. And like, I think the Bad Bunny movie obviously wouldn't have worked, the El Marto movie. And I think this shows Craven's, like, I could see exactly how Craven's going to be like this, too. It's like there are two people at Sony, and, like, they are fighting for control of this Spider-Man license. I guess there's a third person, which is Kevin Feige, just pulling in the direction of the one who's doing cool stuff. But Legacy Across the Spider-Verse people, and it's the Spump people, the Spider-Man universe of Marvel characters. It, they don't call it anymore. I think it's, I think it's just the Spump, which is just as bad. Uh, but I think Spump is funnier. So, like, it, there's this thing where it's like, just stop. You don't need to make these movies. I'm sure this is not going to be financially successful. I'm sure Craven is going to fall into the same thing. Honestly, I can't tell if this is good or bad for superhero movies in general. Because does this add to superhero fatigue? Or does this provide the ultimate low bar for all other movies to be judged against? Like a movie like The Marvels or Aquaman 2. You can watch those and go, well, at least they weren't Madam Web, and that makes them seem better, maybe? I don't know. It's a bizarre movie. It doesn't look particularly good. It doesn't really look anything. Like, there's not a look to it. It does a lot of really aggressive editing. You know what else I'll say? I saw this on Twitter. There was a scene where she goes into a car, and it's edited in a weird way so that she's, like, also already in the car. Uh, it's not like that in the movie. There's another character talking to her through it, and what it seems like they did was just cut out his bits so that they wouldn't spoil... I don't know nothing about him, but they left her bit. So if that is a professional edit that they put on like Jimmy Kimmel or something, uh, that is bad. That should not have gone out. Now, I will say the action in this movie, not great, but not terrible. I do think there were a couple of things that like Ezekiel Sims, the bad guy did. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, like he would jump onto the ceiling and the camera would follow him. That, that was fun. Some of the shots of him jumping, it seemed largely practical effects which I like when they're, when the movie is cool but I don't think I'll be like they're definitely not worth going to see in the theater for this what else what else what else costumes are weird uh I don't remember what people were dressing like in the 2000s like this is when I was in high school so like I should know but I cannot remember I don't see it's weird too because the two two of the girls are dressed pretty similarly and then Sydney Sweeney is dressed like she's coming from like Catholic school or something, which I don't think she is. So it's not particularly a period piece in that like you don't just see it and go like, oh, wow, this takes place in the 60s. You can see this and be convinced it takes place today. And it's not just because fashion hasn't changed that much, but it's just like it's not specific enough to make a huge difference. I guess like if one of the characters was wearing like bell bottom jeans or even just like a Destiny's Child T-shirt or something, Maybe that would help to date this movie better. If there were things that people from the 2000s saw and said, oh my God, yeah, that was what, then I guess that's what you get out of that. The soundtrack wasn't particularly fun either. They used the song Toxic by Britney Spears in a way that is cool. They don't do it enough. That's the other thing. No way. No one says madam. She just, I, There's not even a scene where someone's like, here, you need this cab, madam. And she's like, madam. They don't even do that. But like, I guess we're just calling her Web then. Like Web can see the future. She can kind of see it like you can see 
things it's not clear why you could see certain things and not other things but that's fine that's how these powers work sometimes especially in a movie where it's got to like do plot things so she can see things not other things uh if she dies in the vision she can come back to life so like she can see her own death and then like do that thing over again so you kind of figure because people have made these movies before edge of tomorrow very much this uh groundhog's day kind of although it's not an action movie so it's not trying to hit those same beats you would figure then there is going to be a scene in this movie that will be quite fun where she goes through a bunch of different options. Like she tries a bunch of things. Basically, the scene that Doctor Strange does in Avengers Infinity War that we don't see. But like, that's fine because that movie was busy doing a million other things. But like with this, you're like, oh, are we going to see her like learn all the martial arts and then figure out how to beat this guy? And the answer is no, we don't see that power used more than like once or twice, which is really weird. And not once or twice, but once or twice in a row. So there's like a scene where she does something and then she tries it again and it works. I really would have liked, I think there could have been some fun. I mean, what Loki does this really well in Loki season two, of just redoing the same moment a bunch of times to learn something different, to try to solve a problem that you're just not able to solve. Like this, it's just a very shallow version of this premise. Enough that has been used in superhero movies and action movies, enough that I know what the cool things you can do with it are. And this movie doesn't really do them. I'll also say this about the characters, it's hard. Uh, to write a movie about uh, an EMT who I just don't care at all about, right? Like, they do so little work early in this movie to make this character fun and likable. And I'll say, I'm sure there will be many YouTube videos uh, by many guys. Uh, they will have, like, a picture of, you know, Madam Web with a dopey face and missing some teeth or something, and it'll be like, these women ruined Marvel or whatever. And I think those people will also say she is unlikable. I just think more on specifically on this character, it's like she has more or less no ambition. She doesn't seem to have, and like you don't need to have ambition, but you need to have something you like for me to kind of cling on to. She's nice to a cat. That's one thing she does is she is nice to a cat early in the movie. But besides that, there's just not a whole lot going on with her, especially early in the movie. In defense of uh, Venom, in Morbius and Venom, both of those movies have very early a little montage where the news or an awards presenter I think tells us about all the good things that character did. I think Venom does a better job at this by also having the character just like you know doing his job in a way that you're like that's a good job to people like that journalism he's doing is good but like this character just like her mom is dead, so that's one important thing, which is very unique in the field of superhero movies. But besides that, like, she doesn't have, like, I guess she, like, doesn't want a family, kind of. She doesn't have friends. She doesn't like hanging out with people. She's, I don't know, it's just, like, I, I don't think every movie needs to have a protagonist who is Iron Man. Like, Robert Downey Jr., just levels of charisma. But at the same time, they need to have something. And I don't think Morbius had it either, but at least with Morbius, it was like, I really want to cure my disease. It's really driving all of my action. And you get to the end of this movie, and you're like, what was that about? Like, what did she want to do besides, you know, get the people safe? So, like, two things that are not in Madam Web that kind of blow my mind. And I think if the MCU made Madam Web, first of all, it wouldn't. But then second, if it did, these scenes would be in it, and they would be incredibly helpful. First one, there's no scene of just uh, all four of them bonding. The three girls go to a uh, like a diner or something, and they bond a little bit there. Although I wouldn't say that scene is all that good, but like I, I know what they're going for. And then there's a scene later where the three girls and Web are doing something together, but it's not that kind of like oh these guys like each other bonding. Oh they're this one's making this one feel better. And like it's like that dinner in Black Widow. It is not a plot important scene in terms of like we don't get much new information especially not information that we could just get from a character telling us like this is what she's been up to the whole time but we get that character stuff where it's like this is what this character wants and this is why we want them to get it and like this is why them being together them being a group is good and marvel always does this they're so good at it just having the character sit down for a meal and talking i mean spider-man i guess does it a little differently that's the scene where they're all doing science together but like there's they just do these scenes I'm trying to think, what was the last one? The Marvels? The Marvels had the training montage. It was great. The best part of the Marvels might have been that training montage. But either way, this movie doesn't have that, which is like, fine, whatever. The other scene that this movie does not have is there's no scene early in the movie where someone asks Cassandra Webb, like, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you an EMT? 
This is like a hard job. It's clearly stressful. You don't seem to like it. Like there's a picture where a kid brings Webb a picture of that kid's mother that he drew because Webb saved his mom by doing good ambulance driving. And there's not like a scene where she's like, oh, thank you. This is why I do it. Or like this, she just kind of stands there and goes, oh, what do I do? Uh, but like, I don't know. I guess I, I think like we need to have this character sit down in front of the camera pretty much and talk to Adam Scott and say something that's like, this is why I'm doing this. This is why this is important to me, EMT stuff. Something we can relate later to all this Spider-Man stuff that's going to happen. But like, man, it's just like, it's it's got, it's hard to make a character like this so, you know, nothing. And again, I'm not blaming any of the actors. I don't think any of them were doing a particularly amazing job, but like, I don't think that they're the reason these characters don't work. It's because of the script. Like, okay. I saw Argyle last week, and I didn't love Argyle. Obviously, I didn't do a review about it, but I could tweet it in. I was like, I liked it, but like, I was kind of embarrassed because I know that movie is bad. But Sam Rockwell, A, is able to get that movie so far in terms of just being watchable and being something different than just like any spy movie like Mission Impossible or something. But B, the movie does have some action scenes that make you go, oh, this is why they made this movie. Like someone, Matthew Vaughn, let's say, thought about this, came up with this after the fact, went, what can I do? How can I work that into a movie? And they kind of built a movie around that. That's not what happened, but I'm saying like, you can see it and go, this is so good, it's worth watching the movie. Or at least this is so good, I understand how they sold the movie with this idea. With this, I really don't know what that was. Like, what was the thing that someone was like, I'm really excited to do this. I'm, I really think this is gonna make this movie special because it just, man, it's just not good. It's really, it's really not good. And I, I don't think, this is the other thing with Sony. These movies get announced and fans will have that reaction. We'll go, well, you're obviously not making a Madam Web movie. This has to be something else. Or like, was this a mistake? Is this you announcing 50 projects and seeing which ones people are excited for? But like, they made this, they made Craven. They are seemingly going to make another, take another pass at El Muerto, even though Bad Bunny is not involved anymore, or maybe he is, I don't know. But like, if that project can get off the ground, anything can. There are many characters who have a story to tell next to Spider-Man that would be fun here. For example, Silk. I don't know why we just made this movie instead of a Silk movie. Not just because they're both characters that Ezekiel Sims has interacted with, but like Silk has an origin and some specific things about her that are interesting, like the way her power works, although I don't think you would want to get into that in the, the original power of hers. But like she has her own kind of rogues gallery that's this pocket of the Spider-Man universe. You know, obviously they should make a live action Miles Morales movie, but like at this point, I don't Think it's worth it but like there are characters that are side characters in spider-man that it would be fun to learn more about now but i don't understand why they picked this one except one thing that i remember reading when the cast announcement came out for the first time was someone at sony said this is gonna be our doctor strange she's got you know magical powers that you can look at in the multiverse and all that stuff so this feels like what they were going for was to set up some sort of large Spider-Man universe and then some sort of highway that they could use to connect all these characters. And like, that is such a tough movie to make on its own. But also like, look at if that if that's what we're making, I mean, it seems like it is. What that means is if this movie flops and these guys never want to do this again, it's going to be really hard to use this one highway to get all these characters together. Now, to be fair, they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't put these characters together. But this very much feels like Sony trying to catch up to Marvel because Marvel had a Doctor Strange. And it's not like Spider-Man doesn't have mystical spider friends too. I'm pretty sure he has at least one or two. This is just like, where is Black Cat? I don't, I, everybody says they want Black Cat in Spider-Man 4. I'm less interested in definitely putting her in there. But it does feel like that's a character that would show up in one of these solo things, right? Silk, Black Cat, Spider-Man 2099, make a live action movie about him. Just because he's going to cross the Spider-Verse doesn't mean it also wouldn't be fun to see him do his own thing, especially in that futuristic society that we don't really spend a lot of time with in the other movie. Where is the superior foes of Spider-Man? That's a very good comic that was written very recently, like it's less than 10 years old. And it's about a bunch of Spider-Man D-list villains working together to try to do a heist. So it's a very fun book. It's very silly. And you don't need Spider-Man at all. I just, for the life of me, cannot figure this out. They should stop, though. They, sh they should stop. And I don't even want to say keep the rights back to Marvel. Marvel's got a lot on their plate right now with X-Men and Fantastic Four, which obviously we'll talk about Fantastic Four. But just, like, give it to the Into the Spider-Verse people. They seem to know what they're doing. But yeah, in conclusion, I did not like this movie. I don't think, as some people have said, it's the cats of superhero movies. 
where it's still fun to watch because it's just you can't look away. I don't think it's that interesting. And I think we'll all kind of think about this. This I think if this came before Morbius, this would have morphed. This would have been exactly that. But I think because of Morbius, this isn't going to have that same cultural like silliness and like Morbin time and then they're gonna re-release the movie. I don't think we'll ever see these characters again. I wouldn't mind if they had a cameo, but like I would be shocked if there was any solo spin-off anything that came from this. So in conclusion, uh go see Argyle. No, don't see Argyle either. Argyle's kind of fun. I think like yeah, with Argyle I'd be like, you might be able to enjoy yourself. It's a it's a movie that is dumb, but you could have fun with it. Whereas this is a movie that's dumb, but it's also not really anything super exciting. What should you see at a theater today? If you go to a th I mean, there's like the Oscar movies are playing, right? You probably get to see like poor things or something. Let's see, what's in a theater right now? So if you were going to a theater right now, I would say you should probably see, wow, these are not good. And this is February, you know, so that's just how it goes. None of these, wow. There's a lot of good movies you can watch at home. Like movies that you just haven't seen probably that were Oscar movies that you can now rent VOD. Some of them are even on streaming services. Um, give them a look, you know. One of the videos I might make soon is some sort of my favorite movies of 2023, my favorite shows of 2023. There's so much good stuff on the streaming these days. And uh, besides that, like read a comic. There's so many good comics about Spider-Man and then about Spider-Woman, although I'm not super fond of any Madam Web story or any Julia Carpenter story. But if you like the original Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew, there's plenty of good Jessica Drew books. One that I think is particularly fun is uh, called Spider Woman Agent of Sword. Came out sometime in the 2000s, I guess right after Secret Invasion. That's a big plot point. I would read, you know, Wikipedia page for Secret Invasion so you can understand what happened in there. But uh, it's Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev. And I don't think the story is like the greatest story ever told, but the art is incredible. It is such a good book that at the end of the last issue, they go, listen, we want to keep doing this, but we just can't. It takes so long to make that we're going to go do other stuff. But like we did something pretty cool here. I would recommend that. I think Spider-Woman's a good character. I don't know why they haven't made a Spider-Woman movie because she is very distinct from Spider-Man. Does her own things. She's a spy, private eye, all that stuff like God, I don't know, man. But Madam Web did not care for it. If you want to hear more thoughts, very specific thoughts. I took a lot of notes, a lot of things that I didn't say here. I do a podcast with two friends of mine, DJ and Diggins, called Mostly Nitpicking. Every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Last week we did Argyle. That episode was four hours long. They're not usually four hours long, but that movie is really weird. I have a feeling this Madam Web one might be longer. I think they will be at least of similar quality. And if there was ever a time to jump on the Mostly Nitpicking bandwagon, it was between the two weeks of Argyle and Madam Web, because I don't think we're going to get a bigger one-two punch in 2024. So I will see you there. Thank you for listening to this way too long rant about the Madam Web movie. And you know what? Now it's over. The movie ended this, so we don't need to talk about it anymore.